Hi friends. This this background that you see behind me is uh some some graphics, are some graphics I made in high school. I was going to make a different video about this. Um but this is not what this video is about. Uh see that's a business card. That's a stupid boat. That's a Elvish Fury clan I did which was a GeoCities site. <clears throat> um it was never anything more than a forum and place we talked about Lord of the Rings type stuff. Uh, I made this background in uh, Photoshop class. Anyway, that's not what this is about. <clears throat> this is about <clears throat> man. Excuse me. This is about uh, some stuff I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of development lately. Here's a website I made. Uh, I just finished for uh, the place that I kind of work. Yeah, I work there still, um, just as a web developer, which is pretty cool. I don't have to go in. I just work from home. Um, so they wanted uh, the contact box to always be visible, but I thought that might be annoying, and on smaller screen sizes, um, it would be nice to get it out of the way. So I did some jQuery um, animations there. Um, the arrows here, scroll down. There's a bunch of badges that describe things about the service. Um, it's next edge powered. Oops. Um, it's got some good coverage. Oh, here's a, <clears throat> here's a good Part I had fun with this. Um, this was a Google Map, and I was playing with the Google Map API to get um, a coverage map. This is a bunch of uh, points, uh, latitude and longitude points, uh, in a JSON file, and it's loaded in here. And then there's one shape right here, the blue shape, and then behind it's the red shape. And then in the red shape, I actually have the same points for the blue shape in the red shape which subtracts from the red shape and that's why there's not a mix of colors here um, then this legend it's a custom control this is just a div with a border and a color um, another thing another thing I did was move the controls around I made these zoom buttons smaller well that wasn't on purpose but it was fine because the user isn't really going to mess with the map. Well, they could, but the other thing is I disabled scrolling so it doesn't interfere with the page scrolling. I think I need to still do some optimizations for mobile so you can actually swipe down the screen like you would. Um, I'm not sure how I'll do that or if it's even an issue. Um, by the way, this is responsive. Um, that was a big thing because in my startup engineering course I took at Coursera, they said develop for mobile first because 80% of your visitors are on mobile. So you can see these you know, columns become one uh, column when it's a smaller screen and when it's kind of a medium screen. It, Comes two columns and etc. Uh, yeah, this was kind of interesting. I had to do an offset right here in the bootstrap columns. Never, I've never done that before because <clears throat> there's three three columns here and four columns here. Um, I think I had to make a custom class for this actually. Call mid triple, yeah. I made a custom class for that. Uh, yeah. Um, back to my face for a second. Um, web design is like a very weak point of mine, and I think I got a little better um, in the process of making this website. I should put my face on the other one. Yeah. Okay, so the simple pricing plans, I thought this was pretty cool. I actually 
used another website to get this um, oops to get this uh, design I, I uh, copied some CSS from them or in, I was inspired by it it wasn't an exact copy but it's pretty nice well, the website I copied this was um, it was a chunk host a VPS service that takes Bitcoin uh, more features, blah, blah, blah. The customer would care about that. You probably don't. Here's final contact. And then last thing is this navigation button thing. Um, I originally intended to have the smooth scroll to where you click, sort of like the arrows do. I think that's one thing I need to go back and add in there. Or maybe it's nice to have this fast snappy feel. I like the snappy feel. but I don't know. It depends on what... Mobile Talk wants. All right, that's it for that. Oh yeah, I'm still on camera. Uh -huh. uh, here's a preview, sneak preview. Um, this is TeamRPC.info. Right now, it doesn't resolve to anything, but uh, I'm working on the domain through Namecheap. No, I'm using Dotster, but for that domain. But Namecheap is nice. They take Bitcoin. Um. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, this is uh, Team RPC. Team RPC is a team of myself and my brother Mike. Uh, we did. We have done two Ludum Dare jams together. Um, neither of them were complete, as you can see here. This kind of is just a view of our projects that we've done. Um, if you click these, it takes you to the GitHub page. But here's one project that is done. I didn't do this with Mike, but um, it's a game, so I thought I'd put it on here. Um, it's Guess That Champion, <clears throat> which... Um, oh yeah, I forgot to have it open in another tab. Name That Champion. Guess That Champion. Uh, he used both names. But this is uh, Pixie.js for the graphics. This is... Um, I forget some jQuery, um, uh, see, like it guesses what you're trying to type. I forget what it's called. I think it's the one Twitter made. Yeah, it is. Uh, what's it called? Like Guesser or something? I must know. Uh, type ahead. Twitter type ahead. Um, yeah. So you name the champion. This one is Ari. That's Lux. And that's uh, Alistair, but let's say I get it wrong. Um, um, let's say I call him Tarek. Ouch. And let's say I call this one Alistair. I got 50% to correct to incorrect. And it only showed four champions right there. Um, that was for development, so I could quickly get to this end page and see if I, my little graphs were rendering correctly, which took some work to get them to fit in the the size and the size of the screen. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, there's a script on the back end, the server side, that um, automatically brings in. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go there. Uh, yeah, guess that champion. Cloud9 IDE, it's so lovely for web development. Like I, I don't even use Emacs anymore. It kind of makes me sad. Well, I do use Emacs for um, DevOps stuff, but uh, yeah, there's one thing I need to fix on the game, but it's it's playable right now, completely playable. So I'm gonna release it probably tomorrow once the domain, the Team RPC domain, is good to go in alpha state, of course. Uh, one thing I decided I would do is just release stuff. Um, I read something on Hacker News about shipping culture is hurting us and how people can release products before they're really polished and that reputation can hurt the developer if, if it's not a 
really quality software yet. But on the other hand, I think they mentioned the same thing, or maybe it was a comment on Y Combinator, uh, where someone said, artists ship things. <clears throat> That's what makes an artist. You actually put things out there. And that's kind of one thing I've always thought of myself as, um, as an artist rather than a developer. I, I tell people I'm a developer, but I feel more like an artist. You know, I started out with uh, with um, you know like Flash, Photoshop. Um, Cinema 4D. I always just got those pretty quickly. But where is it? I think I say it on here. Uh, artist. Artist number one. First and foremost, artist. And then hacker comes later. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to get stuff out there. And that's why um, I made that hoster project on GitHub. I talked about in a previous video. Um, that was right after I thought of I should start releasing stuff. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. And that's why I'm going to release this game as is. If people like it, then I can keep working on it. If people don't like it, then I just won't work on it. Whoops, I forgot to talk about this part. Um, the server side there's a lot of game code here anyway uh, no not anyway look at my game code drool at it actually it's pretty horrible some parts of it the preloaders I, I'm not proud of the preloaders don't even work well it's supposed to bring in all the um, champion images and cache them locally and then display them but it doesn't I'm not sure why where I'm going wrong um, it's an alpha, early release, early access, whatever. Um, where where is the part I wanted to show? It's in lib. Download Dragoon. Um, Riot, the creator of League of Legends, has a service called Dragoon. It's for developers, and you can get you can fetch all sorts of game information, game data. Um, champion data, potion data, images. Um, so I made a script that uses uh, the request library, uh, a file system extra library to recursively iterate through directories, um, and comp for configuration, um, a league, league of legends API, um, I forget what this part does, the, the League API, why, why I need it. Oh, I know what it does. It gets the latest game version. And then using the game version, it goes to the, uh, creates a temp temporary directory. Uh, yeah, here we go. It gets the latest version. Well, this is some nice code, um, I think. At least it. It's not using anything like async, but still it's very readable and it doesn't have crazy indentations. Like the code's not going all the way out to here. It's only there. Um, because it's all functioned, functionized, callbackized, I don't know. Uh, so it gets the latest version, um, downloads the Dragon Tail. Is that what they call it? I don't know. Uh, it's a uh, basically an archive with all the game information, it extracts it, it places it in the, the places the extracted files, which would be some JSON and images in the correct directories, which is somewhere like public files, game, data, yeah, here we go. There's the champion JSON. That, um, you can see all sorts of information about each champion that I'm not even using. All I'm really using is the image name and the champion name. And then I compile 
uh, object of game data that has the full path to the champion image and um, also has the name associated with it. Sometimes atrox.ping, um, let me find an example, monkey, monkey king. There's a champion, monkey king. Um, his name in the game is Wukong, but for some reason his ID is Monkey King. And it's monkeyking.ping, and his name is Wukong. If you guessed Monkey King in the game, you'd get it wrong. Uh, I don't know why, but anyway, some there are some instances like that. Um, yeah, and then got all the champion images, lots of them. Um, here we go, Satan. Yeah, that is Satan. Um, okay. Oh, that would be a funny Easter egg. <laughs> Change t name to Satan. It's true, though. He's Satan. Uh, yeah, so that's the thing. The whole point was, um, oh, Earth for the champions that aren't recognized. <laughs> that's an Easter egg, kind of. Uh, Earth is this champion in the game that was in the game for an April Fools like several years ago, and then he was removed permanently from the game, and he's only in the game as champion skins, but kind of a legend of the legendary game. Ha <laughs> ha. No, no, that wasn't funny. Okay, that's it. That's it. Uh, the whole point was I automated the part that changes in the real game the thing that changes in the real game is they add champions every now and then yep okay um i think that's all i was going to talk about oh volter i had volter open volter's so nice um they also take bitcoin um <clears throat> yep okay that's it for now the this has been a sneak peek of some stuff and i'll, I'll see you later uh-oh, I think there's a huge delay.